What's up, it's Nez and hello everyone and welcome to Fatal 12. It has been a long ass while since we played a visual novel on our channel. And well, after sifting through the garbage pile that is Steam, seems like we found ourselves a diamond in the rough with Fatal 12. It's got good reviews and cute waifus, that's all we could really want for in a visual novel. Let's start and see what it's all about. There are a number of terms used to describe the sequence of events that lead to a specific outcome. Some call it life, others call it a story. Wow, getting pretentious there! One is responsible for much during the sequence, such as choices picked, relationships built, and mistakes made. All of that is for the sake of proceeding along a predetermined path. That is the natural order of a world ruled by the concept of fate. Fate never strays from its course, regardless of how cruel it may be. My life and the events in it thus far are simply the product of fate leading me to a certain outcome. That's why I've never once given thought to any missed possibilities found along its path. My life has never been anything worth talking about in the first place. I've never had the luxury of considering the what ifs. This game is feeling a lot like Steins Gate right now. After all, I've convinced myself, life has no do-overs. Once the story ends, that's it. My name is Shishimai Rinka. I'm a second year at Ameka Girls University High School, a rather famous all-girls school in the big city. Unlike my middle school, which has been a hodgepodge of top students and those who barely show up for class, this is a realm of refined and wealthy ladies. A realm I clearly don't belong in. In fact, they wasted no time in labeling me as a delinquent of sorts. One reason, really the main reason, is the golden streaks in my hair. However, it's my natural hair color, so the school itself has no issue with it. Not like I can get hassled for it either. It's just a bit too out there for these sheltered students. The main reason I chose a mecca was because it didn't seem to have many regulations in regards to appearance. It turned out they didn't list anything due to its unspoken rules based on being a traditional school. I was pretty pissed off and I got treated like a delinquent, despite having not broken any rules at the time. Fewer than three months later, I've stopped caring. Much like how I have my own values, the girls have theirs. I can't understand their viewpoints, so it's only natural they can't understand mine. To tell the truth, I am pretty content with making no effort to look at life from another person's point of view. That is, until a certain event causes a massive change in my life. It all starts on a certain day before Golden Week. Why does it always have to happen before Golden Week? The Monogatari series, Clanad, it always happens during Golden Week. There's something about Golden Week in Japanese stories that just attracts the supernatural. So, what happens during Golden Week? What sort of mysteries will we face here in The Fatal 12? <laughs> That must be us, and we are a cute-ass waifu. Huh, the station clock's not moving. I wonder if it's broken. I relay my observation to Naomi as we pass through the ticket gate. I am so glad this whole game is voice acted so I don't have to bring out our girly voice from Pandora's box. Yeah, it seems like the clock stopped. Something about time stopping, supernatural stuff, you know, the usual in visual novels. Okay, so I can get that Naomi's the airheaded friend. This is Hitsuji Naomi, a first year at the Mecca. You might assume that I know her from club activities or something like the student council, but it was a coincidence that brought us together. She may be my junior, but I simply see her as a friend because age difference doesn't matter much to me. Yes, because age is just a number and jail is just a room. <laughs> We're heading back to my place right now, making our way to the station platform to wait for the train. Okay, that was a cute sound. She yelps as she trips over nothing but air. Fortunately, I snag her hand and keep her from falling on her face. Well, she tugs me forward in the process because she's a bit taller than me, but she manages to regain her balance quick. Uh, 
Okay, ladies and gents, we fully established that Naomi must be protected at all costs. We must protect that smile. I'm not sure if it's due to her meek nature or not, but Naomi tends to trip herself up pretty often. She's the kind of girl you look at and suddenly feel an inexplicable urge to protect. Yeah, even the game knows. Oops, I forgot to let go of her hand after catching her. Oh no, can we just hold her hand for the entire time? She casts her eyes downward as she answers. Maybe I squeeze a bit too tight without realizing it. I let go with an apologetic expression. Uh, something tells me she wants to hold her hand. Wait, Naomi, I want to hold your hand too. She fixes her glasses, which has become askew after tripping, and then points towards the platform with haste. Situations like this typically lead to a replay of events from just a minute ago. And she falls on her face yet again. She bumps right into a passerby the moment she starts to walk towards the platform. Even worse, it causes them both to topple over. I make my way over as they make their way back to their feet. She bumped into what seems to be a young girl. She's about the same height as me, but her face is definitely younger. Sometimes Naomi gets mistaken for a middle schooler thanks to her big round eyes, but that's not the case with this girl. Hello, mysterious girl! What's your name? I notice how pale her eyes are when I try to speak to her. Her hair is pure white but mostly obscured by her hat. She definitely looks young, but her facial features stand out more than your average person's. Safe to assume that she's a foreigner then? That means her hair isn't dyed either. <laughs> Unlike Naomi, this girl has fallen backwards. Since Naomi bumped into the girl's back, you'd think she would have fallen face first, but she quickly spun around while falling. Not only that, she also made sure to cradle the bag that she has on her back. Based on its size, I guess she's here on vacation? Chances are she's carrying something fragile in there, like a camera. She's by herself too, so I'm assuming she came here with her family and has somehow gotten lost. Are you lost, little girl? Do you want us to take care of you? <laughs> Wait, no, let's try not to get reported to the police this episode. What I think is a key on her bag at first is actually just a keychain. She hops back to her feet, bag in hand, her glare drilling into me. She seems a bit too panicked to get up on her own, so I lend her my hand once again. <laughs> we must protect Naomi! Naomi, the The girl seems to have looked at us with a judging look. She probably thinks we're some sort of kidnapper that kidnapped Naomi. Wait, no, it's nothing like that! She offers nothing beyond an empty stare as Naomi apologizes and bows her head. She seems like she wants to say something, but for whatever reason, opts not to. Eventually, she runs off towards the platform without making it clear whether or not she understood our apology. She spins around to face us one more time, but I get the feeling that she's locking eyes with me and not Naomi. Ah, oh, yes, is this love at first sight? It's funny, thanks to her unique appearance, she still stands out in the crowd. Then again, my hair causes me to stand out as well, so that's probably how she spots me so quickly. In the end, I'm not able to tell if she finds her parents or if she actually has come here all alone. Yep, that's right, Naomi. As long as you apologize, it's a okay. とはいえ、気をつけなね。ナオミはいつも焦りすぎなんだから。はい。石橋を叩いて壊すくらいに慎重に歩きます。Emphasis on severe caution. We must protect Naomi. それ。as the mystery girl disappeared, is she gone from our view? 
とか本当は怪我してたとか男の子いや女の子じゃなかったおいおいおいおいおいおいおい Was that a girl or a boy? あれでも綺麗な顔立ちだったから女の子って言われても納得です私ま,また失礼なことを Ah, yes, it's only the first episode of this visual novel, and we're already questioning our heterosexuality. The sound of an approaching train rises as our conversation falls. Much like Naomi, we make our way over to the platform. If you do, we will catch you, my sweet, sweet Naomi. Hi. We make our way onto the train bound for Shinjuku, having largely forgotten about the person Naomi bumped into. This is a pretty empty train. We board the next train at Otsaka Station. My place isn't far from here. We first have to get off at Shinjuku Station before taking the metro for two more stations. The only issue is that we're making this journey at 5 pm, pretty much rush hour, so the trains are packed. You call this packed? It's empty! Naomi and I practically glued together on our journey to Shinjuku. <laughs> Did we spot something mysterious with our red eyes? I spy a familiar bag amongst the crowd. Well, the bag itself is standard, so it's actually the keychain that catches my eye. Ah, the mysterious boy or girl that we met a while ago. Yup, it's the kid from earlier. Standing right in the middle of the passenger car, bag hugged tight against their chest. They're not tall enough to reach the overhead straps, but I doubt they'll fall over thanks to how crammed it is. You'd think that this might be destiny! What's in the bag? The strap is probably unfastened a bit due to the people rubbing against it on the train. I'm just worried because the kid doesn't seem to have noticed. The other passengers probably don't care enough to notice either. Some are reading the newspaper, others are killing time by checking out all the ads, but most are on their phones. I doubt I would have noticed if Naomi hadn't bumped into them. And that's why I'm the only one to see what they're doing. With a deadly serious expression almost as if they're being squashed by incredible pressure. What is that? Something black is peeking out of the bag. It looks mechanical, but different from a camera or laptop. For whatever reason, my mind leaps to a conclusion that I've only read in fiction. Look. Wait, 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 really? It's a bomb? Before I can finish, it happens. A flash emits out of the bag. Baku? No, Naomi, no! Naomi! Oh, shit. The detonation is almost instantaneous. A wave of heat propels throughout the train car enough to feel my skin is being seared off. A sharp explosive roar comes right after, puncturing my eardrums. I duck in front of Naomi to protect her and then push her away. I feel my body being pushed by the explosive shock wave too. And in that moment, my body is burned beyond repair within the flames. Did we die? Is this an isekai? Are we gonna get reincarnated in the fantasy world? The fuck just happened? Oh, snap. The whole train car is on fire. Naomi! However, my consciousness remains intact. I hear a voice. I don't feel anything anymore. Vivid memories pull through me. The shockwave, the pain, the heat searing through my body, and yet I no longer feel any of it. My consciousness begins to fade, or maybe I've already lost it. This is but a remnant of it before it fades completely away. The final fleeting moments of consciousness drowned in a sea of fire. Naomi! My sight gradually fades too. No doubt my consciousness will be spirited away, like a leaf in a gust of wind. If nothing else, being able to hear that voice puts me at ease. There's no arguing that fate has decided to end my life here and now. And there we go, the intro to The Fatal Twelve. Kyoko
リータンおーいリータンリンカー Familiar voice A I thought we were dead リンカ先輩 Naomi, is that you? I hear two voices calling out to me I know who they belong to without even seeing their faces いい加減起きれえて How are we still alive after that train explosion? A sharp pain rushes through my forehead, causing me to finally lift my face off my arms. No doubt this will sting for a while. Oh, Yes, what did happen to the fire? Kaji? What are you talking about? Have you seen a Wait, what? Dreams? Isn't that what I was sleeping? Just a Yo, 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 where are we and why aren't we dead? リータンに気なんて使わなくていいからねナオリンあ、あははは The one responsible for waking me up is Oguma Mao, a classmate As usual, she's got her wildly colored hair tied up nice and neat into pigtails Beside her is Naomi And seeing how they are still in their uniforms I guess we just got back from school Did time turn back? Why are we in this cafe? We're at Lion House, a cafe run by my grandmother. The first floor serves as a cafe while the second floor serves as her home. Since I'm living with her, my room's also on the second floor, although it's probably more accurate to say I'm living on my own right now, considering she's gone off to the countryside to help nurse an ailing relative. She clicks her mechanical pencil and presses it against my cheek before scribbling all over me. Wait, no, don't scribble, please. I'm still trying to make sense of what happened. Naomi, don't look at me with that disapproving face. Naomi is visibly disturbed by how much Mao seems to have enjoyed doing that. Well, it certainly has helped to wake me up. A lingering issue, however, is that I can't remember why we're here. De, gome, imatte nani shite takke? Nan, mada okite nai no? Yume o mita se ka, naka bohoto shichatte. I'm pretty sure we definitely died, and somehow time reversed, and we're back here in this cafe. I can't remember what I even dreamt about. I mentioned the fire when I woke up, but I don't recall being involved in one. The fact that I can't remember is starting to annoy me. Don't call me a weirdo. Naomi interjects after I fire glare at Mao. She's making no attempt to hide the fact that she's been forced into it. Granted, she's probably the most fit for the job, considering how serious and thorough she is when it comes to this stuff. Her explanation helps me grasp the situation. Naomi 
The store is only open for the regulars right now since my grandmother's away. Sometimes we get a first timer or two, but I've only got simple stuff on the menu for now, so I can handle things on my own. It doesn't get really busy, so there's no issue in inviting her along. ライオン館はみんなの第二の家っていうのがおばあちゃんの口癖だしね。出た。おばあちゃんの口癖。確かに初めて来たのにここはすごく落ち着きます。落ち着きすぎて居眠りしちゃうのはダメだけどね。もうう
This way you get to see the coffee's black and the milk's white mixed together in the glass. Once that's done, I jam a straw in it and walk it over to Mao with some syrup. Hi. Gum syrup I make myself some coffee after that, take off my apron, wash my hands, and return to my seat. Yes, yes, praise me, Naomi. Mao dumps half the syrup into the cup before even giving it a taste, and then pours in the remaining half. Hearing the ice clink as she stirs it is nice and satisfying. Our grandmama ran away to the province and just left us with the cafe. そうだよ。お店も閉めようかって言ってたんだけど、私が無理言って、ちょっとだけでも開けることにしたの。そしたら、コーヒーを入れるってのが一番大変でさ。おばあちゃんからは、1ヶ月以上かかっても結局オッケ
じゃあおばあちゃんから返事が来たらまた連絡するよはいうちもたまに暇つぶしさせてもらうよ As long as you're paying for your drinks, you can come by anytime, Mao. いいけど、次からはちゃんとお代もらうからね。Exactly. ケチ、当然だろ。With that out of the way, we spend the rest of our time together chatting. I have to help a few customers, but they don't mind me talking with Mao and Naomi so as long as I get their orders out in a timely manner. In fact, some even join in the conversation. Not just because they're regulars, but because I've known plenty of them since I was a kid. They kind of feel like relatives in a sense. Lion House has always had that homely feel to it. Both me and my grandmother consider it our second home. That's why I hope it stays that way once she gets back. Oh, that's definitely foreshadowing. Both Mao and Naomi leave just before 7 p.m. I head up to my room on the second floor after closing and cleaning up the shop. I gotta be honest, I'm pretty excited about helping Naomi. I enjoy making coffee as it is, so it'll be nice if other people end up feeling the same. Knowing Naomi, she'll probably pick up on it easily enough, although her clumsiness is a concern. That aside, what was that dream earlier about? I felt okay once I started talking with Mao and Naomi, but I can't shake that weird feeling from when I woke up. I've never felt like that before. I can't even say for sure if I was actually dreaming. And the fuck is this? In the middle of telling myself to forget about it and try to sleep, I noticed a thick book on top of my desk. It's an auburn color with some gold leaf decorations on it. I assume these are gears. Seems like the kind of book my grandmother would like, but I don't remember putting it here. Let's have a look. Better not mess with it. Fuck that, we're having a look. I take care when cracking it open, trying not to get it dirty. There are no pages inside. Rather, there's a rectangular gap in the middle. I close the book immediately, having more questions now than when I spied it. Might as well message Gran about it tomorrow, considering it's already this late. Someone's calling us in the middle of the night. My phone vibrates after I turn the lights off and hop into bed. It's a message from Naomi. Yes, she is, and I sincerely hope she doesn't die. I send a quick emoji in response and then place my phone beside my pillow without checking to see if she reads it or not. And there we go, I believe that's the first day. Hello there, Nani the fuck? Are we dreaming? I'm pretty sure I've fallen asleep, but I feel conscious. Except, I can't move my body or even speak. Is this sleep paralysis or maybe it's a lucid dream? Yeah. Hi there, strange man! My mother always told me not to talk to strange men in my dreams. I hear man's voice, but I don't know to whom it belongs. A figure appears soon after, but I can't make it out all that well. It's someone slender, with a vaguely androgynous face. I can't respond, so I wait for him to continue. Why, hello there, mysterious purple man! <笑>悲観することはないよ。なぜなら君にはこれから12週間再び生きることのできるチャンスが与えられているからね。ウェイト、ワット普通じゃないよね。そう。その通りさ。けれど、君が特別なんじゃない。特別なのは君の持つ運
Flames that produce enough smoke to smother my lungs. My life turns to ash. My inability to move even my fingers tells me as much. I hear someone shouting. Whoever it is keeps shouting over and over. Their calls are eventually drowned out by the roaring flames that continue to spread. By the time the voice has been entirely drowned out, my consciousness has been extinguished. 